Hello and welcome on Maxakova TV. I'm happy to say that we continue our programs, Synthetic Warfare. And tonight, Captain Gary Tabach and I will introduce a new guest to our audience. Uh, let me ask you, Gary, to um, start, to begin. And uh, uh, I think everyone is impatient to see who is our new guest. Thank you, beautiful Maria. Thank you so much. It's so good to see you. And it is so good to see my brother in arms, Colonel Sam Hartwell. Samuel Hartwell, at the end of the program, you will understand why his name is Hart, like Hart, and why it is well. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a healthy heart, let's say. And uh, I'm honored to introduce our Colonel, we'll call him Colonel uh, Sam. Uh, he is uh, a graduate of a most prestigious military institution, uh, United States Military Academy at West Point. He has served for, I think, 30 years, you correct me if I'm wrong, in the United States Army, reaching a, a rank, a very high rank of a colonel. And he spent all of his career, I know this is going to be interesting for many of our listeners, he spent most of his uh, career or all of his careers as an intelligence officer specializing in the Soviet Union, because at that time we were all Soviet Union specialists. And uh, therefore, he's, he's a well-read and very knowledgeable man in the arena of Soviet Union and former Soviet Union. And uh, he's a combat veteran. He has advised some of our really military leaders on the situations uh, in Iraq and Afghanistan and how the Russians played their roles in them in a, and so forth. She's a very highly decorated combat officer. So now said that, he's also in Ukraine from the very first, I think he arrived in March, right uh, after the 24th of February, as soon as the full-scale war started and started helping uh, with whatever he could. Uh, as as many of us did, so but the 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 reason I wanted to talk to uh, Colonel Hartwell is uh, to discuss. Oh, and a very important part is that his classmate Mark Sam Mark, what's his last name? Bezlovsky. Mark Bezlovsky, his classmate from West Point, came to Ukraine in 2014 and fought with the Ukrainians in Ato. And unfortunately, he was killed. Unfortunately, he was killed. So Colonel Hartwell, Sam Hartwell, has uh, credibility in this arena. So I would say that, uh, unfortunately, not all West Point graduates are people of honor. Because at West Point, again, if uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, a very important thing that General MacArthur said that honor, country, duty is very important. We all as officers pledge the allegiance that we will not lie, cheat, steal, nor tolerate the ones that do. We will not tolerate people who do that. We will go after them. So that is, uh, and the, many of us uh, uh, people in the military will look up to uh, cadets from West Point, to the midshipmen from Naval Academy, to cadets from the Air Force Academy, because this is the code of honor that uh, we live by. Unfortunately, we have such a person as Colonel McGregor, who is, I believe, graduated from West Point a few years before you, Sam, and he's a, a, a very uh, common guest at uh, Tucker Carlson. Hundreds of millions of people watch him. And so, for some reason, he ended up being an expert on the war in Ukraine, on this region. And now, again, I don't want to repeat the, the 30 years of experience that Colonel Hartwell had and 30 years experience me as a FAO officer, foreign aerial officer who was specializing in this arena. Both of us are here from the, uh, from, uh, from uh, since the war started and we were here before. Where Colonel McGregor is an armor officer, probably has never been to Ukraine except maybe some short visit or something. 
And all of a sudden, he is, uh, he, I believe he's an armor officer, which is very respectful and, uh, and uh, honorable to be an uh, uh, armor officer. But all of a sudden, he's an expert with, with, with Tucker Carlson. Tucker Carlson never interviewed me, nor Colonel Hartwell. But, all, but for some reason, Colonel McGregor is the expertise in this area. And I had a challenge uh, with him saying that uh, uh, he, was, he was lying. We cannot, Colonel Hartwell and I, we cannot tolerate another senior officer lying to the hundreds of millions of people about Ukraine. The 250,000 Ukrainian soldiers are dead. Where are his sources? That uh, that uh, uh, drug cartel in Mexico had on his back a Juvelin missile, which was not even me as a naval officer can tell it was not a Juvelin missile, and that missile was stolen or sold due to corruption in Ukraine, which is an absolute lie, and it's not. It is not true, and. Um, Many other things that he've said about Ukraine and the morale of the soldiers here, the unwillingness to fight, the uh, uncontrolled corruption here, that I think were truly to mislead the American people and to discredit the Ukrainian uh, talking about uh, a dictatorship here, uh, closing churches. Uh, I mean, we all know the churches many years ago working for KGB and he did not close all churches, only the ones that worked for the Russians. And many other things uh, 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 in such uh, manner that he um, that he was presenting Ukraine in a, in a very, very uh, bad light. And I don't understand why. How can we fight that? So, Colonel Hartwell, please, could you tell us what you know about Colonel McGregor and why he's doing such thing. Well, first of all, I can say that he claims that 400,000, not 250,000, but 400,000 Ukrainian soldiers have been killed. It's a preposterous, it's impossible. Um, the Pentagon has their estimates uh, and the Ukrainian government doesn't officially state anything, but his his number is probably at least eight times too high, maybe even 10 times too high. It's just a preposterous number. OK, first of all, now about his background, at first, I couldn't believe that he was a West Point graduate. And then I did some checking and I found out that. Yes, he, he was a graduate in 1974. I talked to one of my classmates who met him eight years ago in Washington, D.C. Uh, McGregor came into his office and it was clear in the conversation he said that he was bitter about not having been promoted to general officer. He has uh, an anger towards the Army. And he was at one time, one time, a roommate of General Petraeus. And he told my friend, my classmate, that it was he that should have been a four-star general, not Petraeus. So it's clear that you have here a guy with a, uh, an exaggerated ego. Uh, Almost a, uh, uh, besides his anger towards the army, he has this, this uh, uh, feeling that uh, he's entitled, or that it, I, I don't even know the correct uh, the term, but uh, he, he feels that uh, he should have been a four-star general. So he's got these delusions of grandeur, really, and this anger towards the army. So he has to, in some way, because of this, feel that uh, the way for him to feel important is to make these crazy claims about Ukraine that for some reason, Tucker Carlson wants to hear. And that's the other strange thing. I don't know who the bigger liar is here. Tucker Carlson could have any one of the last eight NATO commanders in a row on his show but he doesn't. And every one of those eight commanders who have opined on the military situation 
are in support, strong support of Ukraine and say that we're not doing enough and that Ukraine is doing a great job. As the Pentagon has said, on a scale of one to 10, Ukraine is using American weapons as a 12 on a scale of one to 10. So why he lies so obviously is beyond me, other than it's it's an ego problem. He's got these delusions of grandeur and this bitterness towards the army. It's just a very personal psychological thing. And then you have Tucker who facilitates him. I cannot believe that so many people would listen to a, a colonel who's a nobody, a nobody ahead of the generals like Petraeus and Keene, especially, who have been so outspoken. Anyway, this is what I know of the man, and that's my assessment of him, and it's just uh, not evidence. Sam, uh, and I just want to explain, those of us who had the honor to serve under uh, the command of General Petrez, uh, we called him uh, uh, an American Napoleon. So uh, I just want our listeners to, to understand who General Petrez uh, was to us and who he is now. He will go down in history as one of the greatest military leaders that has uh, been uh, known to people. And the history will show that. So it is idiotic to think that, uh, I mean, I think that you have to be sick to think that you, you have been General Petraeus. I should have, you know, my mother was a psychiatrist. And as a child, I used to go to, with work to her to a psychiatric institution. And even there, I've never met anybody who said I should have been a Napoleon. So, uh, so what you're saying is disturbing, particularly that it, it will mislead uh, millions and hundreds of millions of Americans and other uh, spe uh, speak English speaking world world to such uh, misinformation and pure lies about Ukraine. Also, I was completely disturbed uh, and disappointed with uh, Tucker Carlson agreeing to it that the uh, Ukrainians put uh, an American as a spokesman for the, um, uh, not National Guard, but, but for the local defense units, for local defense units uh, to, uh, to pre represent them in English language. And the guy is, or a gal now, is a transsexual. And I'm not sure which the right way to express it. Yes, many of us, and especially in this culture, may not agree with all those things. And we think it's not, uh, we could, uh, but the thing is, yes, the individual could be transsexual, but that individual was volunteer and was a medic and saved many lives out in the front and was wounded uh, as well. So their sexual preferences or whatever they, they, they think they are, is fine. I, I may not agree with it. But to say that this way the Ukrainians are not uh, preserving or uh, uh, protecting the Christian values and Putin in the sense by bashing gays and <laughs> preserves our Judeo-Christian values on which our country was uh, based is, I think, preposterous. It's the same thing to say that Hitler was preserving Christian values because he was killing Jews and gays and gypsies. And that way, the, the, he was helping out the Christian church. That is bizarre. As a Jew, brother Christians, I can tell you that KGB thug, is not preserving or representing any kind of Christian values. None. So to, for Colonel McGregor, a West Point graduate, I will never be tired to underline that because uh, I think our listeners should understand what a West Point graduate is. It is the best of the best, of the cream de la creme. It is the, the tip of the spear of our society. To get into the West Point, you have to be way above anybody, not in your class, but in your entire school. To even get an appointment there, to even to to even uh, take an exam to get in there. So this is the best officer that our country has been putting out for what two hundred years or so. I don't know how long my hold is West Point, but uh, so it, it is it is uh, it is offensive to to both of us, to Cur Colonel uh, Hartwell and to to myself. But now I think we. I'd be glad to hand over the interrogation to Maria Maksakova.
We will continue the interrogation of Colonel Hartwell. On the opposite, I want to say that all kind of speculations, what you just told us about, are uh, not only very uh, harmful uh, to the audience, to um, their misleading people, to uh, wrong thoughts and uh, ideas, but uh, at now, at the same day when all this is happening and uh, there are those TV shows uh, and people are sitting in nice um, rooms and the cameras around them and so on, at the same time, uh, the Ukrainian soldiers suffer because of the lack of armory. And this is why I think we cannot um, uh, keep silent about um, programs of that kind. Too many people watch them and too many people have the wrong opinion after them. So I think that uh, Colonel Sam began already about uh, his psychological uh, portrait. This is very interesting, I think, also to our audience. And I think uh, it would be correct if we um, ask Colonel Sam to continue. You know, I could talk about the military situation a long, long time, but um, the former, all the former NATO commanders, General Petraeus included, say that we should be giving Ukraine these long-range HIMARS missiles called ATACMS, and we should be giving the HIMARS cluster munitions, just as we have given the uh, normal artillery. The regular artillery can shoot about 25 kilometers, these cluster munitions. So you can go deeply into the uh, Russian rear. But with a HIMARS missile, you could go a full 50 kilometers deep into the Russian rear. We don't have, the Ukrainians, I say we, do not have air superiority. We don't even have air parity. In the American army, no commander would do what we're asking the Ukrainians to do. And that is a problem with this administration. I don't understand it. I hope that uh, they'll change their mind soon and, and authorize these cluster munitions for high Mars. But that is a major, major issue. We need those munitions now to really exploit the success that we're seeing in Zaporizhia Oblast. Um, Gary, uh, Yuri wanted me to mention what I'm doing here in Ukraine as well. First, let me introduce you what you're doing uh, with your permission. Sorry for interrupting you, Colonel. But uh, I met, uh, I'll say Colonel Sam, I think it would be easier for our listeners. I met Colonel Sam, uh, it was introduced by my brother in arms who worked with me in Poland, transferring F-16s to Poland from us and other uh, military equipment. And he introduced me, he says, you have to meet this this guy, Sam, he's, a, he's an army. I'm like, I don't wanna meet the army guy. But anyway, I was uh, very happy to meet when we met, we were talking about uh, what we were doing and assisting uh, wounded soldiers and, uh, uh, and helping them in uh, different ways. And uh, I was telling Colonel Sam that I met these people, uh, doctors who are doing face reconstruction. Because limbs, when legs and limbs and arms are missing, we're kind of used to it. We don't turn away from those people. A society accepts them. But when somebody's face is messed up, and uh, people tend to turn their eyes away. These people tend to shy away. They stay home. It's a very psychologically difficult thing to deal with. And Colonel Sam right away picked up the phone. I mean, this is what the leadership was all about. This is what I think the local leaders have to learn. Uh, not to say, okay, I'll talk to my friend who has a friend, who has a friend, and then, well, that friend is, um, uh, is sick, that friend is fired now, and then, then the other one is in prison under investigation, and things go on and on and on, and they never, never come to any kind of conclusion, but promises a lot, kind of a lot, like <clears throat> our administration now with Ukraine, promising and promising and promising. And uh, uh, 
uh, Colonel Sam right away picked up the phone and started making phone calls and text messaging. And by the time our conversation was over, he has, I have it. These doctors can go to this conference. These people are going to meet these people, and they're going to continue with work with uh, uh, with the wounded soldiers. So he, it was done, and in about an hour, he kept sitting there and doing it and doing it until he got it accomplished. So with that, uh, my first impression of you, Colonel Sam, please tell us what is it that you're doing in Ukraine since March of 22. May I comment one more thing about uh, the long range uh, missiles uh, attack arms? Uh, this is the theme uh, we're discussing every single week because um, I don't really see a reason why it is so tough and long lasting. Uh, to get this decision out of the White House administration in the moment where already the Congress accepted the resolution about it, where everyone in America who knows the subject is actually pressing uh, on the uh, White House administration and particularly on President Biden about um, the uh, Ukrainian uh, generals and politicians, it is clear and evident that there is over a year time that we are asking uh, for particular this type of missiles for attackers. And the only thing that is now missing is that um, signature probably of uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Joseph Biden of the president. Um, and right away, exactly when all this discussion comes up to a very, very high level again, we see a TV show made by Tucker Carlson with uh, that colonel uh, we're talking about today. Okay. And this whole, uh, what was, you know, done by everyone, all these efforts, they kind of drown in um, that conversation. And those who were kind of, I don't know how to say it in German, Putin Versteher, there's someone who is trying to understand why the, uh, that thug, as you said, Gary, absolutely correctly, is doing something. It's a point to, I, I don't know, you can ask a, a psychiatrician why he's doing something, but why are they discussing in a way uh, that makes possible, postpone that very important decision about attackums? Isn't it somehow, uh, I don't know, has it, may, it may have a liaison. Is it somehow connected? Why exactly when we need that decision? Comes up a TV show of that kind. If I can answer that, uh, I can give you my opinion. Um, I think from the beginning, first of all, Joe Biden has never been in support of military action. He was against the Osama bin Laden raid in Afghanistan. He's been criticized by both parties for not being strong enough. And he has with him a national security team that is from originally from the uh, Obama administration, who were also very, very weak on Ukraine. I believe they don't understand the enemy, they do not understand Russia, Russians. Putin, they believe Medvedev when he makes these threats, and they're worried about nuclear war. But all of us who know Russia, the Russian mentality, Putin, Medvedev, we all know that this is just bullying, bluff. They can do nothing. But the current leadership takes it seriously. And unfortunately, because of that, because we don't show some aggression, some escalation, we don't show our own red lines, then Russia sees this as a weakness and keeps going and going and going. I don't know why they won't allow these ATACMs. Neither does 
any of the senior former generals in the U.S. military. So we all share your concern. We all share your concern. And also right now, as you, Maria mentioned it very well, why did it come out now? Why did such uh, interview came out now? Also, in uh, Ukrainian favorite uh, media sources, such as New York Times, Washington Post, CNN, uh, Politico, they came out just recently with articles saying that we gave all the weapons, everything that's needed to Ukraine. We gave them everything. We gave $120 billion, which is not true, uh, uh, of military aid to Ukraine. And uh, uh, But Ukrainians are not advancing fast enough. They're not fighting hard enough. So they're preparing, I believe. This is why this is such time. I believe that they're preparing to tell Ukraine that they're not going to help any longer. That today's administration is not really intending to help because they've tried everything to force Ukrainians to commit to uh, negotiations and Ukrainians keep resisting and saying, we're not going to negotiate until until the Russians are gone from our land. And uh, this is the message they're sending now. And McGregor and Tucker are playing up to it. They're playing up to Putin and they're playing up to uh, against Ukraine. So at that point, Sam, I'm very sorry. Let's get back to what is it that you're doing in Ukraine? Well, I could still keep talking about the military situation, but uh, I'll, I guess I'll stop now. The uh, well, yeah, as as Captain Gary said earlier, that uh, my one of my very best friends from West Point, my classmate Mark Pizlowski, was killed at the uh, the Battle of Ilovysk, uh, August nineteenth, two thousand fourteen. He had been living in Ukraine since early 1992. I was living in Ukraine in the mid 90s, uh, just right around the corner from him. And we were great friends here uh, as well. And I have a lot of other Ukrainian friends. So when the war started, I came because of those reasons, because of his, his memory. And he's uh, he's buried in uh, here in Kiev at uh, uh, Mohila. Askold Mohila, you know, this famous cemetery for Ukrainian war heroes. So in his memory uh, and to help my friends, I came over and I started early on supporting uh, NGOs, American NGOs, supplying medical gear to uh, Ukrainian forces. But uh, now I'm almost exclusively in veteran support. I represent uh, or assist three U.S. Uh, NGOs here. One is a U.S. Polish NGO that is focused on prosthetics primarily, but also polytrauma support. And that website is polytrauma.org. Then I also uh, assist uh, now, a, it's called Veteran Coalition International. It's based in Washington, D.C., but it is a U.S. Danish partnership. And what we're trying to do there is to get all of the kind of veterans uh, administrations, the veterans groups in the various NATO countries to work together and to assist um, Ukraine in developing their own veteran networks and to assist Ukrainian veterans. In fact, right now, uh, Veteran Coalition International is working together with a Ukrainian uh, veteran NGO uh, called Pysia Slujby. And what we've got are uh, lawyers in Ukraine who are going to do the paperwork for uh, Ukrainian amputees and other wounded veterans to make sure that they get their uh, bonuses, their money, and their uh, veteran pay from the government. It's not automatic, as many people think, and the soldiers think that too. But now that we understand the process and we have the paperwork and we have uh, a multiple, many uh, pro bono Ukrainian lawyers ready to work, we're ready to take a thousand of these amputees and other wounded veterans. And we're working on that right now. That is uh, project number one for me. And then a third project 
is with a U.S.-based uh, organization and NGO called AspenAid.org. And with them, we're bringing in these doctors to do training and then to also do uh, pro bono operation work and to uh, assist with um, the uh, prosthetics uh, in Ukraine. We want to promote prosthetics made in Ukraine for these uh, wounded veterans, for the amputees, for many reasons that are obvious. Um, those are the, the three main areas that I'm, I'm really, really focused on. Veteran support, helping these guys get money, helping them get prosthetics faster, either in this country or outside this country. And then, uh, well, one more thing with AspenAid is we're bringing doctors from the U.S. into Poland and Lviv, maybe even Kiev later, for uh, on-the-ground training. We've already got a specialist uh, spinal surgeon coming to the Lviv Veterans Hospital who's going to spend a week with their surgeons uh, on special operations. He's been here already uh, earlier in the spring where he did seven spinal surgeries for children who had scoliosis. It's fantastic uh, work that he did. And that, again, that's pro bono. And it's because he's a Ukrainian American. So that's what I'm doing. And if there's any questions, uh, I'd be glad to uh, to help in any way I can. Thank you. I uh, have so many questions and uh, so many things, but I think it is very, very important that uh, uh, what you're doing, Colonel Sam, in the sense of putting the veteran organizations together. To not, so we're not just bringing and helping Ukrainians uh, with prosthesis, with this, uh, with a PTSD, with a psychological recovery, with employment, uh, with a family work, with different things. But what we're doing, we're we're teaching them how to help themselves, so that our veteran organizations and their veteran organizations can get together and learn how to help yourself without uh, an outside. Help. Although it's always good when people are united and people are, you know, we're brothers in arms and sisters nowadays in arms who, uh, who are working together and uh, helping each other. Because today we're not fighting for one country uh, or for one czar or for one God. Today we're, we're fighting for the right side, for the, to be on the right side of history. And uh, it, unfortunately, <laughs> it is being uh, fought for on the Ukrainian soil today where where we could be instrumental. But uh, uh, today the world is very small and there's bad and good and we just got to remain on the good side. And it is clearly that Ukraine with all its problems is on the good side. And uh, at least three of us are together and at least three of us are doing it. So uh, I also want to let me make sure that people who are listening to us, Colonel Sam and I, we're of the same rank. It's just in the Army, it's called the Colonel. In the Navy, it's called a Captain. But uh, I just tend to think that in the in the Navy, a little bit higher because we got a little bit more class. <laughs> that's, a, uh, that's why we don't like when somebody calls us a Colonel. But anyway, uh, Colonel Sam, thank you for your service. It is an honor for me to know you. It is an honor for me to stand back to back with you. And we continue to be engaged in a good fight, even though we're two men that are not, uh, although we probably could still run around with a gun, but I think there are younger and braver guys now who fight those wars. But you and I could still, and Maria, we can still be engaged and continue the fight, and we don't give up. I want to thank you too because it was very inspiring and uh, very reinforcing um, hearing from you. Uh, well, things that uh, are so deeply needed, and sometimes we have a feeling that there are only a few of us who uh, talk it out, who say about it, and every time when I really feel 
a brother in arm, as Gary said, coming to our company. I feel very, very happy. And I want to thank you for that. And as you said, Gary, when there are even two or better three of you uh, thinking about something important, then as we Christians know, um, I am among you. That's true. God says I am among you and there are two or three thinking about one thing. And we should not let people like uh, Tucker Carlson, who I've listened all of my adult life, uh, or somebody, a bad guy like McGregor, or a lot of bad and corrupt and cheating people, we should not let them discourage and us. And we should not let them say that their type of um, indulging, indulging the uh, those uh, criminals by saying that they are having some Christianity. This is something that ruins, honestly to say, uh, a way to think for many people. Correct. Colonel Sam? Yeah, well, I just wanted to say thank you, uh, Maria, for having me. And Gary, for all the kind words, it's actually a, a, a great pleasure to have met you and know you. I wish you were on the National Security Council, given Biden advice. You are probably the most experienced and knowledgeable American Thank in the you. country, in the, in the military, on this subject. Thank and it's, uh, I, I, and I really... I, I'm not exaggerating at all. I know quite a lot, quite a few of the FAOs in this uh, in this business, so-called specialists in the Russian sphere, and too many of them have been Russian apologists for so many years and saying nothing and doing nothing. But you've lived there, you've grown up there to a point. You understand the mentality. You understand far better culturally, militarily, socially, politically, what's going on there than anyone in the administration. And I, I it's a great pleasure to know you. I'll learn a lot from you. Thank you both very much for having me. And let's hope that one of you uh, will finally arrive at Tucker Carlson show and that you will have the possibility to tell the truth. Tucker would never be that brave, but we wish. We can try. Colonel, I salute you. Thank you very much. Thank you.